Now for this last part of the question, what I've done is I've updated the diagram from the previous part. We found that the tension here in this string was 18.41797 and so on newtons. And for this problem, we've got to find the coefficient of friction given that this rod is about to slip. And if it's about to slip, then that frictional force has reached its limiting value of mu times r, the contact force here, and that would be measured in newtons. So we've got to find out this coefficient of friction mu. And to do that, what we need to do is, first of all, find out what r is by resolving vertically. And then we're going to resolve horizontally, and from our equation, we should be able to solve for mu. OK, so we start then by resolving vertically. So we'll just go over here, resolving upwards. So we've got all of R acting upwards, and we've got minus the weight, minus 4G newtons there, acting downwards. Obviously the frictional force doesn't come into play because it's perpendicular to our direction, but when it comes to the tension here, then part of that does. Let's just draw a dotted line up in that direction. So we need this angle in here. Well, if I was to draw a dotted line across there, you should be able to see that this angle in here is going to be 20 degrees. This one in here being a right angle, this would be 70 degrees. And that is being a right angle, so this one in here has got to be 20 degrees. OK, so we can then see that the component upwards from the tension here, T, is going to be T cos 20. And so that's plus T cos 20. And so this is the resultant force now acting on the uniform rod here, AB. And because it's in equilibrium, it's going to equal zero. So we just need to rearrange this to get R. So R is going to equal 4G minus T cos of 20 degrees. And you could either leave it like this or you could put your value that we found for T in. If you do, let's say you put your 18.41797 in here, you end up with that R equaling 21.89 to 7 and so on newtons. Okay, we've done that bit. Now we need to resolve horizontally. So if we resolve horizontally, taking the right as positive, we've got mu times r. So just put that as mu r. Obviously this r doesn't come into play because it's perpendicular to the direction. Same too for the weight. But then we've got the component of the tension T acting towards the left. And so it's going to be minus T, and then it'll be sine of 20 degrees. Minus T sine 20 degrees. And again, this is the resultant force. The rod is in equilibrium, so it's going to equal zero. So if you rearrange this for mu, you can add t sine 20 to both sides, so that will give you mu r, and then divide both sides by r. You end up with mu equaling t sine of 20 degrees, all divided by r. Well, we've got r, it was up here. We've got t, it was here. If you put those values into the equation, you should find you get 0 0.2877 and so on. And if we round this, say, to three significant figures, it's going to be 0 0.288 to three significant figures, 3SF. Okay?